Okay, section 7.6 is on the rational zero theorem. So the rational zero theorem. I also call this the rational root theorem, same thing. All right, this is my favorite theorem in algebra 2. So when it's your teacher's favorite theorem, you know it's going to be on the test a lot. <laughs> so you guys need to know this one. All right, so basically here's what it says. So the rational root theorem for, um, or rational zero theorem, says if the polynomial p of x has integer coefficients, then every rational root, so that means that every place where it crosses the x-axis, that's a rational number. So like 1, negative 3, 2 thirds, all possibilities um, can be found by this method. So it can be written in the form p over q, where p is a factor of the constant term. That's the number on the end. And q is a factor of the leading coefficient. Okay, so all possible places in number one that you can cross the x-axis at a rational number um, would be in the form p over q. P is factors of 7. Q is factors of 4. So P is always at the end. Q is first. All right, so factors of 7, you could have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 7. Factors of Q, so 4. So factors of 4 are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4. So that means our possible rational zeros, if I was going to write them out all individually, you could have every combination. So like 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 4. Oops. So 1 over 1 is 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 4. You could have 7 over 1, 7 over 2, 7 over 4. And they could all be plus or minus. So that's 12 different possibilities. So out of an infinite number of rational possibilities, we've narrowed it down to 12, which is pretty cool. OK, so you could check those with synthetic division to see if they are zeros. You could also use Descartes' rule of signs, which we learned yesterday. And let's say we knew that there were zero negative real zeros. It wasn't possible. Then we wouldn't try any of those negative numbers. So now we'd have it narrowed down to 6. <laughs> All right, so let's do the next step. So it says find all rational roots of p of x equals x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4. So we're going to list the possibilities again, and then we're going to actually find the rational zeros. OK, so p over q. So p comes from factors of the last term. q comes from factors of the first number, which is 1. So factors of the last number would be 1, 2, and 4, and factors of 1 are 1. You can write out all the possibilities. I usually am OK with you guys leaving it like this, as long as you know that there are um, six possibilities in the end, right? So 1, 2, 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 4. All right, so our polynomial is x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4. Okay, some of, you, some of them you can kind of do in your head. So we know if it's going to be a 0, there's lots of things that are going to happen. So if it's going to be a 0, it's going to factor evenly. Well, this one we don't really know how to factor because it's x cubed. Um, we also know that if it's going to be a 0, when we plug that number in, we get 0 out. So is there any number in that list where you can immediately see that when you plug it in, you get 0 out? 1. All right. Um, we also know that if we use synthetic division, we get a remainder of 0. So yes, you can find it by doing what Kern just did, by plugging it in and getting 0 out. But our end goal is going to be to try to factor this polynomial. So once you can kind of see that in your head, like, oh, I know 1 works. I'm going to use that. Do synthetic division with it. So we have 1x cubed plus 3x squared 
We don't have an x term, so put a 0, and then minus 4. Drop the 1. So we have 1 times 1 is 1, add straight down, you get 4. 1 times 4 is 4, add straight down, you get 4. 1 times 4 is 4, add straight down, you get 0. And then write how your polynomial has been factored. So your polynomial has now been factored into the divisor, which is x minus 1, and the quotient, which is x squared plus 4x plus 4. Okay. So once you get, get it down here, yeah, Mary? How did you know the divisor? Um, because it's a zero of the divisor, see how if you plug one in, you get zero out. Yeah, so whenever we have, like if I had negative three in the backwards L, that meant I divided by x plus three. Okay, if I had positive three, it'd be dividing by x minus three. It's always the opposite. So where did you get that from, like the x minus one? Like how did I know to use one? Yeah. Okay, um, so I knew from my list the different possibilities. The different possibilities were one, two, four negative 1, negative 2, and negative 4. And I said, are there any that you can see that when you plug them in, like see if you plugged one in, you'd get 1 cubed plus 3 times 1 squared minus 4. You'd have 1 plus 3 minus 4. Do you see how you can kind of see in your head that you're going to get 0 out? Okay, then that's a good one to try. Okay, sometimes you can't see and you just have to try synthetic division, which is fine. Okay, so we've now factored it. Now, we don't have to do synthetic division anymore because now it's down to x squared. And what do you guys notice about um, this divisor here, or this quotient? Yeah, you can factor it. It's x plus 2 times x plus 2. So if I'm finding the zeros, all the roots, the first one we found was x equals 1. We found that with our synthetic division. The next one is x equals negative 2, and the last one is x equals negative 2. So that's your answer. Can you go try to do that one? Nope, because you're, if you are smart about it and you're like factoring along the way, usually as you're factoring, you're going to find the other ones. Okay. So you don't, you don't have to try them with synthetic division. You're just going to try to slowly factor your polynomial. So it's pretty cool because we learn how to factor a polynomial that looks like this. We learned that it factors like that. Okay, so number three. It says, find all rational roots of p of x equals x to the fifth plus 3x to the fourth minus 9x cubed minus 31x squared plus 36. Okay, so if I was going to do this, my p over q, so my different possibilities, p, so factors of p are, um, or factors of 36 are going to be your p values. So you would have 1, 2, 3. We're listing all the factors of 36. 4, 6, 9, 12, 18, and 36. And those are all plus or minus. And then factors of the leading term, so 1, are just plus or minus 1. Okay, I used what I call the rainbow method. Like, I, I went through and I got to 6, and I knew that Okay, if I, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6 were all factors, and then I, I knew that its pair was going to be, you know, like once I knew 1 was, I knew 36 was as well. Once I knew 2 was, I knew 18 was as well. Do you know what I'm saying? So that's a way you can check that you have all of them. Okay, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Nine positive numbers, nine negative numbers. You have 18 possibilities. Okay, so when you have 18 possibilities, you do not want to check all 18 possibilities with synthetic division. It gets messy. So that's why I said, suppose you cheated and you graphed it on a graphing calculator. Do you guys all know how to graph a polynomial on the graphing calculator? Yes. <laughs> so when you graph it on the graphing calculator, you're looking for when it's crossing the x-axis. <laughs> they have it on their page. All right, so... What are the places you think that's at? Like, what do you think that one is? Uh, the one I just drew in red. 
Negative 4? Nope. Negative 2. What do you think the one past it is? Negative 3, right? This one looks like 1, maybe? Okay, so we're going to try negative 3, negative 2, and 1. We think that those are zeros. Now, what's important to know is that when you get to pre-calculus, it's probably not going to be those nice whole numbers. You could have things like 4 fifths, 5 fourths, which look like 1 on your graphing calculator, but they aren't. And that would happen when you have like a 4 or 5 or something out front here. Um, you would get those fractions. And I've seen Mr. Sark's pre-calc homework, and they're always nasty. <laughs> so they're never nice and one. <laughs> so be ready for that. All right. So let's say we try one. So we think one's going to work. So I have 1x to the fifth plus 3x to the fourth minus 9x cubed minus 31x squared plus 0x, don't forget you had a 0 there, plus 36. This was no x term. Okay, and then we do our synthetic division. So 1 times 1 is 1, add straight down I get 4. 1 times 4 is 4, add straight down I get negative 5. 1 times negative 5 is negative 5, add straight down I get negative 36. 1 times negative 36 is negative 36, add straight down I get negative 36. 1 times negative 36 is negative 36, add straight down I get 0. So think how you factored. Since you had 1 in the backwards L, that's your x minus 1, that was your divisor. And what's left, you started with x to the fifth, so now you have x to the fourth. So x to the fourth plus 4x four cubed minus 5x minus 36, oh sorry, x squared, minus 36x minus 36. Okay, so that's how you factor. Do we know how to factor the second one yet? No. So if you don't know how to factor the second one, then try one of those other numbers. So we tried one and it worked. So now let's try negative 2 or negative 3. Because we've cheated and we can kind of see which ones we're supposed to try. All right, now, what a lot of my students like to do is they, they like to just continue from that step that you just had. Because now that's your new, that's your new uh, polynomial that you're trying to divide. Okay, so you can do that. If you need to write it somewhere else, you can write it again. Okay, so let's try negative 2. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Add straight down, I get 2. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Add straight down, I get negative 9. Negative 2 times negative 9 is... 18, add straight down, I get negative 18. Negative 2 times negative 18 is 36. Add straight down, I get 0. <coughs> okay, we still have our x minus 1 out front. And now we factored our x to the fourth one into x plus 2 times x cubed plus 2x squared minus 9x minus 18. Uh, the x plus 2, that came from this divisor here. Okay, now what? You could do it again, is that what you're saying? Or, yeah, do you guys see how you can factor this one and make grouping? So if you don't have to use synthetic division, you don't have to. But it is a nice way to factor. I mean, for those of you that have trouble with factoring, you can do synthetic division now. All right, so you can pull out x squared. You get x plus 2. You know you want x plus 2, so you'd have to pull out a negative 9. So you'd have x plus 2 times x squared minus 9, which factors into x plus 2 times x plus 3 times x minus 3. Drop the other two down. So x minus 1 and x plus 2. You've now factored that ridiculously long polynomial from the beginning. Pretty cool, huh? I think it's cool. <laughs> Maybe you guys don't think it's cool. Um, the benefit of doing the like p over q, if you're gonna like use synthetic division anyway, like I don't. Um, because that tells you your possibilities. So if you didn't have your graphing calculator, which in AP calculus you don't have it for two thirds of the exam, you only have it for a third of the exam, then you cannot do this little cheating method. You can't just like graph it and say, oh, I think maybe it's this one. This is what I'm gonna try. Okay, so this will tell you your possibilities. So we'll do something like that. 
So your answers are x equals 1, x equals negative 2. That one's an answer twice. Notice in your graph it had multiplicity 2 because it came down and hit it and then popped back up like a parabola. Um, x equals negative 3 and x equals 3. So those are solutions. Next up. Okay, find all rational zeros of the function. So we list our possibilities. So let's say we don't have our calculator on this one. So our possibilities, p comes from the last number, so factors of 8. q comes from the first numbers. I'm nice to you a lot in Algebra 2, and often that's 1. Okay, so we want factors of 8, so 1, 2, 4, and 8. Factors of 1 are 1 and negative 1. So we have 8 possibilities, 1, 2, 4, 8, negative 1, negative 2, negative 4, negative 8. Okay, now I can tell from my original polynomial I can see a trick, because I know if I plug in 1, are you going to get 0 out? No, why? Yeah, they're all positive. So if I plug in 2, am I going to get 0 out? No, I can't plug in any positive number. So if you had done D Descartes' rule of signs on this one, you would see that you have 0 possibilities for your um, positive real zeros. You're not going to have any positive real zeros, because there are no sign changes, right? Okay, so we're not going to have any positive numbers, so that means I need to try my negative choices. So I only have four things that I need to try. Okay, if one of them works, then I'm going to factor, so that will help. So let's say we try negative one. So I have 1, 10, 33, 38, and 8. So 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Add straight down, I get 9. Negative 1 times 9 is negative 9. Add straight down, I get 24. Negative 1 times 24 is, ooh, goodness, 24. So when you add straight down, you guys see you get 62. Right away, I can tell this is not going to work. So I cross it out. Always draw a line through it so you know, you know what you've tried. Oh, it is negative 24, yeah. It still doesn't work, though, does it? Let's see, so it was 14. Yeah, it still wouldn't work because you wouldn't get 0 out. So we want 0 at the end. Okay, so let's say I try negative 2. So 1, 10, 33, 38, and 8. Okay, so I get, drop the 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Add straight down, I get 8. Negative 2 times 8 is negative 16. Add straight down, I get 17. Negative 2 times 17 is negative 34. When I add straight down, I get 4. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. When I add straight down, I get 0. <laughs> you guys are all relieved. You have no idea how hard this was when I was in high school because we did not use graphing calculators. <laughs> so. There were tests that I had where I tried like nine different things. <laughs> it still wasn't working. All right, so we've now factored into x plus 2 times x. Remember, you were at x to the fourth first, so now you're at x cubed. Plus 8x plus 17x, or sorry, 8x squared plus 17x plus 4. Okay, you can't factor by grouping. You guys see how it doesn't work? You're not going to have like numbers that are in common. Okay, so we have to do it again. Yeah. So now what do you want to try? Yeah, let's try negative 4. Now, negative 2 could have had multiplicity. I mean, it could be an answer more than once. But let's go ahead and try negative 4. So if you just want to try it from this step, that's fine. Just know your new divide or your new quotient. What, that's still, still not the right word. Your new dividend, your new polynomial is the 1x cubed plus 8x squared plus 17x plus 4. So drop the 1. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Add straight down, I get 4. 
Negative 4 times 4 is negative 16. Add straight down, I get 1. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Add straight down, I get 0. So now you factor it into x plus 2 times x plus 4 times x squared plus 4x plus 1. Can you factor any more? No. Okay, if you cannot factor, these will not be rational zeros. Okay. Can't, so let's write can't factor. So these are not rational. Rational means a fraction. Remember, if you factor, like if I had 3x minus 1 times 2x plus 5, your answers would be 1 third and negative 5 over 2. Those are, those are in fraction form. So if you can't factor, you're not going to get um, rational answers. All right, so your only rational answers are x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 4. And that's it. Now, on your homework, I'll say things like find all real zeros. So if I said... find all real zeros, or if I just said find all zeros, so real or complex, what would you have to do? <laughs> Something. <laughs> you would use, how would you solve this? What? Quadratic formula, right? Because that answer could have i's, so it could be complex, or it could have square roots, irrational, right? So if I said find all real zeros, you'd have to find the rational ones, so square roots. If I said all zeros, you'd have to find rational ones, irrational ones, and um, complex ones, so like i's. Okay. So the next one, so an op open box is to be made from a square piece of material with side length 10 inches by cutting equal squares from the corners and turning up the sides. Okay. I always do this problem in my calc, well, not this exact problem, but a, a problem similar to this in my calculus class, and they never know how to set this up. So this is a classic math question. You'll see this in college. You'll see this in future classes. Okay. Have you guys ever made, like, a box out of a piece of paper? You've done that? Do I need to demonstrate at the front of the room? <laughs> Maybe. All right. I'll demonstrate. <laughs> All right, so we learned we have to cut squares from the piece of cardboard. Oh, now it's not going to project. All right. Oh, and it says that we're starting with a square piece of material, so I drew mine. I need to draw mine as a square. So we started with a square piece of material with side length of 10 inches, 10 by 10, and we cut equal squares from the corners and we turned up the sides. So on the dotted line, I'm going to cut those little corners out. What size of square would you need to cut if the volume of the box must be 48 cubic inches? So I'm going to make this square x by x. So each one has to be x by x, so we have a nice uh, constant height for our box. So think about what your box looks like now. Something like that. We have a length, the width, the height. So what's the height of the box? X. X. Do you guys all see that? That was the part you folded up. So when you fold this part up, I have no idea how to draw my arrow. When you fold it up, this height is x. All right, now the width is from here to here. So it was 10 originally, but now it's 10 minus something. Yeah, you subtracted out two of the x's, right? Same thing over here. That's still 10 minus 2x. So your volume is length times width times height. So it's x, 10 minus 2x, 10 minus 2x. 
and we want it to be 48. So I'm going to multiply it all out. So I have x times, when I FOIL the two binomials, I have 100. Your outer is negative uh, 20x, your inner is negative 20x, so you have minus 40x plus 4x squared. Distribute your x. I'm going to write it in descending power. So I'm going to have x times 4x squared makes 4x cubed. x times negative 40x makes negative 40x squared. x times 100 makes 100x. And I'm going to subtract my 48 over. So we're here now. This is what we're trying to solve. Now when you list your possibilities, you're going to have a lot because you have 48 for P, right? So you could have 1, 2, 4, lots of things. All right, and you have 4 for um, Q. Can you make this one a little bit easier on yourself? Yeah, they have a common factor. They have 4. So you can divide by 4. And you can do that by pulling out 4 to the front or just dividing by 4 on both sides. It doesn't matter. If it was an x, you can't divide by x on both sides because you'd be getting rid of a solution. All right, so I have x cubed minus 10x squared plus 25x minus 12. All right, so that means that our p over q is 1, 2, 3, 4, um, 6, 12, over plus or minus 1. So we still have 12 possibilities. Okay, now let's think logically. Your side was 10 originally. Do you think you're going to cut out x equals 12? No, can't work. Do you think you're going to cut out x equals 6? No, because you have to cut it out from both sides and you only have 10. So that would be cutting out 12. So 6 and 12 are definitely gone. When I'm thinking logically, I probably don't want to try 4 either because that's going to make a very, very um, thin box. right? If you cut out 4 from both sides, you only have 2 inches left. It's probably not 4. Same with, I mean, maybe not 1. So I'm guessing it's probably 2 or 3. Okay, so let's try two, and then we'll try three if it doesn't work. Okay, so let's do two. So when I try two, I have 1x cubed minus 10x squared plus 25x minus 12. So I have 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Add straight down, I get negative 8. 2 times negative 8 is negative 16. Add straight down, I get 9. 2 times 9 is 18. Add straight down, I get 6. Oh, no, it didn't work. I knew it didn't work. <laughs> I knew the answer. So it's 3. So 1, negative 10, 25, negative 12. 3 times 1 is 3. Add straight down, I get 7. 3 times 7 is 21. Add straight down, I get 4. 3 times 4 is 12. Add straight down, I get 0. What did I do? Oh, yeah, yeah. I made two mistakes, didn't I? That was quick. All right, so you get 0. So you've now factored your polynomial into x minus 3 times x squared minus 7x plus 4. So your answer is x equals 3. Now really though, on this one, I always, I always get mad because I think one of the textbooks I used had this problem. And you should really find your other two answers with quadratic formula. So x equals negative b. 7 plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. You can just write down the answers if you want, if you ran out of room. So that's 49 minus 16. So square root of 33. So you have two answers. So 7 minus 5.7446 divided by 2.
and 7 plus 5.7446 divided by 2, so 6.372. All right, the sixth one doesn't work because you'd be cutting out more than what you have. You have 10 inches to cut from, and if you cut out 6 from both sides, it's not going to work. So that one's out. But this one could also be a possibility. So there's actually two possibilities that would give you a volume of um, 48. Okay, now this one probably isn't right, though, because if you think about it, if I told you to cut out 0.628 inches, I think you guys would probably have some problems with that. So it's probably the three. But I just wanted to let you know that there could be two answers. Okay? Yes, Gabby? Why when we were up to that, did we, like, write down the minus? Yeah, that's true. Gabby said, why did we write the minuses for P, P over Q? You would know that this could be a negative number as well, so you've eliminated those as well. All right.